Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we added our first model into the game, we added some animations, but we still have no sounds. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. Now before we start with adding the sounds, we want to deal with the problem that we had in the previous episode. And the problem is that we're triggering the movement animation inside the unit movement script. But as we know, this script is only enabled when the unit is selected. So when we deselect the unit, the script is disabled and then we cannot control the animation. So for this we're simply going to change the code a bit. So inside the unit movement script we can see that when we set a destination for the unit we also trigger the movement and then when the unit arrives to the destination it becomes false. But again, this is not the best place to put it because this script is not always active. Instead, we're going to place this logic inside the unit script. So over here, we need a reference to the animator and the agent. So, so we're going to get these references inside the start method animator. And it's very easy with this autocomplete navmesh agent. And now we need to create an update method. So at the bottom, we're going to create the update method. And now we're simply going to copy the code that we had inside the unit movement. So we're going to take all of this and paste it inside, but we're not going to check the path. Instead, we're just going to check the distance and we're also going to change it to check if the remaining distance is bigger than the stopping distance. And then we're just going to set it to be true, else to be false. Now, of course, we also need to give it the actual name, navmesh agent. Although it doesn't even matter. So now when the remaining distance is bigger, we know that we are moving. But when the remaining distance is smaller, then we're going to stop the animation. So this is a better place because this unit script is always active. Now, of course, let's go back over here and delete all of this. We only need to delete the things that are dealing with the animation. So this thing, this thing, this entire else, this thing. We still want to keep this part. And we also can delete this animator component and we can save. So now we can see that if we send our unit over here and we deselect it, it knows to stop the animation when it arrives to the destination and everything works as it should. So now we want to add our first sound into the game and it will be a simple attacking sound for the unit. So of course we can add an audio source on the unit itself and then play it over here. But this is not efficient because if we have a bunch of units and even hundreds of units, something that can definitely happen in an RTS, it will be a mess. There will be a lot of sounds playing together and the performance will be very bad because each one of these units is going to have its own audio source. That's why this is not a good idea. Instead, we're going to have a sound manager that is going to have an audio source that will be dedicated for the sound of the infantry attack. So let's create an empty object and name it sound manager. Then we're going to create a script named sound manager as well. And we're going to drag it on the sound manager. Of course, we can also create it by adding a component. Now we need to make the sound manager into a singleton because we're only going to have one sound manager and we also want to be able to access it from different parts of our code. So we're going to open our unit selection manager and copy this line of code. And we also want to copy this awake and this awake simply checks that it's actually a singleton and that there are no other copies of this instance. So we're going to change this to sound manager. And now we need to simply add the sounds for the unit. So for this, we're going to have an audio source and this sound clip. So private audio source, and we're going to name it infantry attack source, 
or let's say infantry attack channel because an audio source is like a channel. It can play different clips on it, usually things that are separated. Then we also want a clip, so public, we make it public because we want to assign it in the inspector, audio clip, and this will be infantry attack clip. Now we can add this audio source manually on our sound manager, but later we're going to have a bunch of other audio sources. So instead we're going to add it when we start the game. So over here inside the awake, we're going to say that this channel is actually a component that we're going to add as the game starts. Then we can change a few settings inside. So let's change the volume a bit. And that's just because I know that the clip that I'm going to use is very loud. Of course, you can also adjust the sound of the clip itself. And then we also want to make sure that it's not playing on awake because this option is usually true. So let's set it to false. Now that we have this done, we want to have a method that is going to play this sound. So public again, because we want to be able to access it by our units, void and play in infantry attack sound. Inside, we're going to check if this channel is already playing, because if it's already playing, we don't want to play anything else. So if the channel is playing, but we want to check if it's not playing, because only if it's not playing, then we want to play a new sound. So if it's not playing, play one shot, and this simply means that it's going to play this clip once, and we're going to use our infantry attack clip and play it over here. So it means that only if this channel is not playing another clip, it's going to play this clip. Now, you may be wondering, what if several units will call this method? They will all use the same channel, and it means that we can only hear this clip once. But what if we have 10 different units that are attacking at the same time? And this is actually a solution and not a problem. Because if all of these sounds are going to play together, imagine 10 units or 100 units, it's just going to sound very bad. So we want to limit the amount of sounds for each unit. Now, of course, you can add a secondary channel so you can have two different units having different sounds and playing at the same time. But this is not a good idea. It's a good idea to only have one channel and only play the sound once because this is only relevant for the infantry unit. But imagine that when we get tanks and when we get background music and when we get sounds for the UI, sounds for the effects, it's a lot of different sounds and we don't need any extra sounds. So it's a good idea to only play this sound once every single moment. And this is actually the way they do it in many RTS games. They limit the amount of sounds each unit is creating, each unit type actually. So even if we have a hundred units that are attacking, we're only going to play this clip once. And now to play this clip, we simply need to go to the unit attack state and inside the attack method, we're going to reference the sound manager, play infantry attack sound. So now each unit will call this method and it's going to play the infantry attack sound. But if we have two units calling this method at the same time, only one of them is going to play and the other one is going to be silent. Now we need to find a clip for the shooting sound. So I'm going to add a link in the description with a website that has a lot of different shooting sounds for free, of course, and you can choose whatever you want. I already found a clip that I like. So I'm going to create a folder named sounds and I'm going to add this clip inside this folder. And now all we need to do is drag the clip into this slot over here. And now when we run the game,
we can see that we can hear the sound. Now, when we have multiple units, so let's duplicate our unit. Let's also make sure that on the nav mesh agent, the stopping distance is somewhere between one and zero, but not zero because we do want them to stay apart from one another. We don't want them to collide with one another. So I think like 0 0.5 is a good value and do this for all of the units. And now we're going to run the game and we're going to see that even if all of them are shooting at the same time, it's only going to play the sound once. And it actually doesn't really make a difference we know that there is shooting going on and we can see the units. So it doesn't really matter that the sound goes out of this one and then the sound goes out of this one, especially in an RTS game when you're actually looking at them from a top view. So there is no importance to where the sound comes from as long as there is a shooting sound. And again, later we're going to have more units with different sounds, tanks, explosions, lasers maybe, construction for the buildings, UI. So all of these sounds should work together and still be clear. So this is how we do it. It's very simple and you can actually add more units at this point. You can do whatever we did. We can You can simply copy this thing. You can change the model. You can change the settings. You can change the animations and add your own units. Of course, we're going to do it, so don't worry. And we also want to delete these older units, these primitive ones. We want to delete both of these and have only one unit. We're going to rename it to infantry unit. And we also want to make a prefab out of it so we can delete the old one. So it's going to tell us that these are also deleted. Let's also delete the old enemies. And now we're going to save this new unit as a prefab. So of course, later we can instantiate it when we have a building that generates soldiers, right? Because in the beginning, we're not going to have any units and then we're going to build some kind of barracks. And then this barracks is going to generate soldiers like an RTS game. So we still, are in the very beginning of the series and little by little we're going to add more things and it's going to feel like a real RTS game. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed. Please leave a like, share the video if you can, and I'll see you next time.